hey, use code Bengal at sign up on FanDuel. You get a free $20 to play with. Also, check out my links down in the description for Twitter, Twitch, second and third channels for all different types of content that you might enjoy. So be sure to check it out and let's get into the video. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the 7th Round Bus Podcast. We're on episode number 3 today. Got a uh, pretty good episode, I would say. Pretty good prospect breakdown, definitely. Hope they all are, you know? Uh, yeah, true. Hopefully they are <laughs> all pretty good. But, yeah, on the uh, the docket today, going over, going back over the NFL Divisional Playoff Games. Also going over some uh, championship game predictions for us. And then uh, today was the NFL Draft declaring deadline for underclassmen, so kind of going over that because uh there's a you know pretty big player in that so actually a few pretty big players declared today oh so, yeah uh gonna go over that at and least then, uh, three big ones yeah I think. three big ones three big ones today and then uh prospect breakdown kyler murray jonathan abram josh jacobs later in the podcast so yeah i think this is gonna be a pretty good episode but uh how are you doing how are you doing bangle i'm ready to roll all right Let's get into yeah, it. So NFL divisional playoffs. What were your thoughts about the playoffs? Because it was like, I don't know. I felt like it was mostly blowouts. <laughs> Not surprised. Part. Not surprised is where I am. Yeah. Um, I mean, we were four for four on predictions. So Ooh, that is true. That is true. So, I mean, Chiefs Colts, that was the first game. Ugh. <laughs> not good for the Colts there. Colts did not come to play. I couldn't hear enough. I picked the Colts to win in the wild card and in that playoff prediction video, and everyone's like, oh, you're selling the Colts short. I'm like, they, I predicted them to win, and they're like, our defense is at top of the league. <laughs> and it's like, they just got obliterated by the Colts. It wasn't even close. They couldn't even score on the Colts' defense. Well, Chiefs. Or on the, uh, or the Chiefs' defense. I think I, that's, I like, the biggest thing is, like, the Chiefs' defense really impressed me. Like, that, I thought that was their, like, weak point was the defense, mm-hmm. and... Look good. I mean, the Colts. They played well. Colts won. without they Eric Berry, score. by the way. Yeah. They scored one offensive touchdown. The other touchdown was off the uh, the block punt. Mm-hmm. That was bad. Which yeah. was supposed to be a momentum changer, yeah. and it really was. It really you know what's wasn't. an interesting storyline to this game? What is there were four touchdowns for the Chiefs. None of them were Patrick Mahomes passing touchdowns. That's pretty interesting. I mean, Damian, Damian Williams, Williams had, had a, a really rushing touchdown. Game. Yeah, he had a really good game. 129 yards as well. Tyreek Hill, they're counting that as a uh, it was a 36 yard end around rushing touchdown. Hmm. Daryl Williams, or Darrell, Darrell, one one touchdown, and then Patrick Mahomes with that rushing touchdown as well. It's pretty interesting. Sammy Watkins also had a carry for a negative two yards. <laughs> Continues to be a big contributor for that Chiefs team. I can't believe he's like. Like a few years ago, if you told me that Sammy Watkins would be a like not even a factor in an offense, are you are you just repeating my tweet right now? What tweet? I tweeted out like on the game. I'm like, if you would have told me back in 2014 that Sammy Watkins would be uh, on one of the best offenses in the NFL and as a non contributor, I didn't even I, see that I, tweet. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I just I, I made a face when you said that. And I'm like, I'm like, is he repeating word for word my tweet? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that was bad that was just a bad game and then uh yeah so the chiefs getting a uh i mean airheads always hard to play in and they get another home game too so mm-hmm. that's gonna be a interesting matchup we'll talk about that later the next game was was it uh rams colts or rams cowboys i mean rams, rams cowboys so this one was kind of weird because the rams started off hot and it looked like, I mean, C.J. Anderson, where did he come from, by the way? And why is he, why does he's he look Mike like, now. yeah, why does he look like Mike Tolbert? Like, he's got a gut. He's a thick boy, man. Oh, he, yeah. He, Two C's, maybe three. He, he's big, but uh, he had a big game. Uh, I think Todd Gurley was still, is still like a little bit hurt, and that's why he had a lot of carries. But, yeah, C.J. Anderson had a big game. Cowboys kind of started to come back a little bit, but it, it I, I never felt like the Cowboys were going to come back. They were never in control, yeah. which is, I think, what it comes down to. And I mean, they made a nice little comeback there a little bit. You know, bring it, you bring the score closer. But, I mean, they were they were never really a threat. You're right with that. Yeah. Uh, Zeke, 20 carries, 47 yards. He did get a touchdown, <laughs> but maybe maybe that uh, 
got to lay off that Chick Fil A before the game, you know. Yeah, eating with two spoons in the playoffs. <laughs> but, uh, Twenty carries for forty yards. Yeah. The tweet, by the way, read, uh, "Who would have guessed back in 2014 that Sammy Watkins would be the least impactful starter on the best offense in the NFL?" Hmm. It's true though, because yeah. he was a monster at Clemson. And uh, he, I mean, it, injuries really hurt his career. Yeah, but he was good he's early just, on. He was good early yeah, on. He's just never really been. He's never been worthy of a top five draft pick, obviously. And the Bills traded up to number four to get him. Ooh, I forgot they traded up to get him. Ugh. Oh, yeah. You know who went at number five? Who? Khalil Mack. Oh. You know who went a little bit later? Aaron Donald, Odell Beckham Jr., Mike Evans. Ugh. Oh, I mean, Mike they, they Evans? missed big time. Yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's a yikes. Big old yikes. So that was that. Uh, whew, next game, yikes <laughs> for the Chargers. Patriots Chargers. That was bad. That yeah, was, I mean that was thirty five to seven and a half. Probably could have been f- like thirty eight to seven and a half because <laughs> they should have called him out of bounds. But it was close. It was close for that guy being. Philip Rivers looked like my impression of him in that tweet that blew up. <laughs> he did. He looked terrible. He was. He threw the ball fifty one <sighs> times as well. Three thirty one, three touchdowns, only one interception. I guess fifty one times. All those all those points came in the second half where. The Patriots are like, who cares? The game's yeah. over. Because it was. It was over. It was. I mean, I think they scored like two garbage time touchdowns at the, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they, quarter. Had, they had 14 in the fourth. Yeah. Ugh. Melvin Gordon was absolutely subdued. To be fair, they only gave him the ball nine times. They, they as, were just a runner so early. But yeah. Nine carries, 15 yards. Wow. Average 1.7. I'm surprised uh, Justin Jackson didn't get more touches. But, yeah, one one for four. Yeah, but I mean, Keenan Allen had two catches. Yeah, I mean, he was locked up the entire game. Uh, besides that one deep pass, mm-hmm. but it really just shows how good Stephon Gilmore has been this year. He's been incredible. Oh yeah, just a- absolutely a monster. And then he uh, actually had the interception as well. And then uh, in game. the rushing attack for the Patriots. I mean, Sony Michelle, 129, three tutties. James White caught a record, 15 <laughs> passes. <laughs> yeah, James White. What's going on? With uh, Julian 50. Edelman receiving nine catches for 151. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, it was uh, it was just a bad game, really bad game for it the was, Chargers. It was whoever was on the Patriots is going off. That's, yeah. that's what this this game really shows. Offensively, defensively, they were overmatched, outplayed, and it showed. And so many people took the Chargers to win this game. I think I think you did. I um, I think right? I think I said I. I don't know what I said. I might have taken the Chargers. I, I think you ended up going with the Chargers, but like I just really I wanted Philip Rivers to win. That's all it came he, down to. He's never beaten Brady oh, ever, and, eight and, now. and that still shows. Oh, and and eight. Uh, I mean, you just, you just bottom line, you can't go into Foxborough and beat the Patriots. You can't. Yeah, you can't. But, uh, Patriots. We'll, we'll talk more about this, but Patriots not good on the road this year. And then the final game, Saints Eagles. What a weird game that um, was. 14 yeah, nothing lead for the Eagles. And, and out to a hot start. 20 unanswered points. And then, uh, of course, the big, big, I guess, drop for Alshon Jeffrey. It wasn't even – it went right through his hands. Yeah. And he's been, like, pretty Re-drop. good for the Eagles, too. And went right through his hands. I think uh, Marshawn Lattimore picked it off. And yep. uh, that was it. So. second pick of the game at that point. Yep. And it wasn't even, like – I mean, Nick Foles, you see a stat line, 201 passing – uh, yards, one touchdown, two picks. The first pick to Marshawn Lattimore was his fault. Underthrown pass to Zach Ertz, and Marshawn Lattimore made a great play on yep. the ball. Mm-hmm. And the second pick, I mean, come on. That's right where it needs to be. It Alshon Jeffrey just took his eyes off it. That's what it comes down to. Yep. And uh, Marshawn Lattimore was, was right there because he was open. Good read, oh, yeah. good throw. And uh, unfortunately for the Eagles, I, I'm very happy that they're out. <laughs> Well, uh, they're done, and it was funny. CK Birds, if you guys know him, he makes YouTube videos as well. I think he just hit 100K. So, yeah, congrats, congrats to him. Congrats he, on the big day. Eagles fan. He quotes tweet or quote tweets me early on in the game. <laughs> Eagles just went up 14 nothing, and he I think he quote tweeted some Saints prediction with yikes, lol. And I quote tweeted back, and I'm like, you better delete this tweet before <laughs> I have to quote tweet you when the Saints take the lead. And uh, of course, I did. And I mean, 20 unanswered. I don't think it was ever in doubt. Even down 14, 
Like, I'm like, ah, oh, this is easy. The only time where I'm like, I don't know, is when they had the fumble in the second quarter. Mm, that yep. at first it was called um, that Brandon Graham took possession of it. That was and then so the Saints weird. got it back. <laughs> yeah. So it would have been a first down, which was a weird call. Yeah. You don't see that very often at all. And then, like, no, Brandon Graham, like, never really had possession. It's still fourth down or whatever. But when that ball was knocked loose, I'm like, oh, man. This Saints team did not come to play. But uh, <laughs> it, it pretty much came down to uh, Michael Thomas is going to get the ball every single time. 12 catches for 171 yards and a touchdown. Nasty. <laughs> so many catches. Nasty. Let's see, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So every other Saints receiver combined in that game went for 15 catches, and that's with getting tight ends involved and running backs involved and receivers, and then Michael Thomas had 12. <laughs> yeah, he's – That's uh, crazy. Top five? Top five receiver in the league? You'd have to say so. I think you have to I think he's, he, he's in that top five group. Mm-hmm. Where I think any of them can compete for number one, which it's, is it's Antonio one through Brown. five. One through five yeah. is, and then whoever else you put, it's, you put them wherever. One Antonio Brown, DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, obviously, I think you have Odell, Julio, mm-hmm. and then Michael Thomas, and then the next tier where they're good, but they're not the number one receiver in the league, maybe. And that's Keenan Allen. That's Devontae Adams. That's AJ Green. Debatably, Juju Smith-Schuster, Mike Evans. I, th- I think, honestly, in that same tier, I want Brandon Cooks and I want T.Y. Hilton because they're smaller guys, but their numbers are unbelievable. Yeah, they, they, they put up numbers. They I really do, and that. it's valuable. It really is because while my mindset has kind of been like, oh, they're not they're not true number ones. They're not doing that at any team. But, and Tyreek Hill as well because people are going to come from my head. Tyreek Hill is not top five, but he's, he's in that next tier. He's an elite playmaker. But even this year, Brandon Cooks only had five touchdowns which was uh, a low for him in his entire career since his rookie year where he only started in seven games. He still had 1,200 yards receiving. He's had over 1,000 yards, pretty much 1,100-plus every year of his career besides his rookie year, and he's done so on three different teams. Yeah. That's that's, so weird. Yeah, that's crazy. He's been on three different teams. He's only 25. At at 25 years old, he has 1,000 yards receiving with three separate teams. (laughs) <laughs> that's almost a tweet in its own right. I think I'm gonna have to get on that. Yeah, but that's that's, uh, that's unbelievable. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. The fact that he does it with three different teams is just crazy. And he's been traded what twice for a first round pick. Yeah, I mean he's worth it. I think he's definitely he's definitely lived up to depending his, so. on where your team's picking as well. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah, that was uh, I guess if there was a close game, really, it was the Saints Eagles. I, I I honestly didn't feel like any of the games were that close. Saints Eagles. You know, it came down to that final drive. So I said, that yeah, that was, if there was close. a close game, it would be that one. But <laughs> yeah, it, it's it just was. weird because like it was close, but it was weird because like the Eagles had that first quarter, and then I feel like they just didn't do anything the rest of the game because they didn't. Because they didn't. <laughs> that's, so that's why. So it's like it, it was close, but it wasn't like a like. A, I don't know how to explain it. It wasn't. Like no, a, I, I get what you say. Yeah, what you're, what you're it wasn't saying, like but... a fight to the end. It was like, ah, yeah. well, okay, we, I guess we'll try to get this game winner now. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, those were the divisional matchups. Now we got the championship games. Uh, so the AFC Championship: Patriots at Chiefs in Arrowhead. That's, Apparently, that's that's a, that's a later game. Is that the later game? Six forty, and the Rams Saints is three oh five. All right, so we'll do uh, Rams Saints first, then. So, mm-hmm. Rams Saints. Oh man, in, in New, Orleans. New Orleans, where Is this I believe the, first the Rams seems to play this year. No, they. I believe the Rams lost to the Saints in New Orleans earlier in the year. Um. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yep. That's true. Forty-five, thirty-five in the earlier matchup. Um, it's this weird. Is an interesting one. It's weird because I think. I don't think the Rams defense – the Rams defense is going to hurt a lot in this game, I think. I think the Saints Dude, I, I'm I already know I'm taking the Saints. This yeah. like My playoff bracket would be exactly perfect right now except for a tipped missed field goal by Cody Parkey <laughs> from some no-name on the Eagles. So I got the Chargers-Ravens right. I got uh, Seahawks-Cowboys. I got Colts-Texans. I missed Eagles-Bears, and that kind of screwed up the bracket. But I got – Again, from the, from the beginning, I got Chiefs over Colts. I had Patriots over Chargers. 
I would have had Saints over Eagles, but it was it would have been at that point uh, Saints over Cowboys, and then I had uh, the Rams winning and beating the Bears, but instead they beat the Cowboys, which I would have had as well. And now it's exactly how I thought it would be. Rams, Saints, Patriots, Chiefs. I'm not saying this is an insane prediction. Obviously, these teams are seeded as highly as they are, yep. but it's for a reason. These were the four best teams in the NFL over the course of the season without question, and yep. here they are beating the conference championship as it should be. I took the Saints early on. I took the Chiefs early on. I'm riding those predictions out. So I'm, I'm thinking we're seeing a uh, Saints-Chiefs Super Bowl, which will be very exciting. Yes. Two kind of weak defenses versus two high-powered offenses. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so I think I honestly think the Saints-Rams game is going to go the same way it went earlier. I think the uh, the DBs are really going to hurt the Rams. Where uh or like uh because Michael Thomas had an amazing game. Was it keep to lead playing in the first time they met? I, I don't, don't think, think so. so. I think Marcus Not Peters that was that on really uh, matters. Michael Thomas, but I mean Michael Thomas in the first matchup this year, Michael Thomas had twelve catches for two hundred and eleven yards. <laughs> yeah, I mean <laughs> and I honestly it think week. it could happen Michael again. Michael Thomas gets the ball every single passing play. Yeah, and I he honestly think that does. could happen again. Like I think Michael Thomas might have a big game again. Or Alvin Kamara, like someone's gonna have a big game for the Saints. I think it could potentially be a shoot, shootout again. I could see that happening. I just think the Rams defense is probably going to let them down. And, uh, yeah, I'll take the Saints on that one. But who knows? I mean, you never know. That's why they play the game. And then yeah, uh, right. so Chiefs-Patriots. This is an interesting one because apparently it's going to be like possibly like negative five degrees in that game. It's going to be super cold. In Kansas City? Yeah. Really? Super cold. Negative apparently they're predict- like it's like some Arctic something thing. Arctic Blast. Yeah. So I see that, this on CBS. Yeah. So uh, it's supposed to be super cold in that game, um, which I don't know who it helps, really, to be honest. I mean, the Chiefs' run game is looking good. They just they just dominated the Colts in the snow. I'm not worried yeah. about it. So <laughs> I'm not worried about it. I think, honestly, the, it, it's weird because Stephon Gilmore's been good, but I think – I just don't think uh, – with how, after seeing the, how the Chiefs' defense played last week, the pass rush is looking good. Yeah, I think I gotta go Chiefs. I think Patrick Mahomes' arm is looking, you know, MVP like, of course. Mm-hmm. And oh, he'll win it for sure. And uh, yeah, I think uh, the the only thing is, I mean, the Patriots have the goat. They have the goat. Never count out the goat, but James White. <laughs> hey, he has a he has a record in the playoffs now. Fifteen catches. Yeah, that's crazy. But I, I just I can't see Kansas City not winning this game. Unless, oh, I can. <laughs> I, I can see. I, I hope the Chiefs win. I want the Chiefs to win. I predict the Chiefs to win. But the Patriots, have they've already done it in Arrowhead. Yeah. And But, but my true. my story for the entire playoffs was I you can't beat a team early. twice. You can't beat a team twice in the same season uh, in this. And so far, that remains true. Well, so, that, mean, that means Saints got to worry about the Rams. Then. <laughs> but, yeah, but, I, forgot, uh, I forgot they played early. But that was a super close game. That was a other re- than that. I I still think the Saints beat the Rams. But. Yeah, because it was a uh, last second field goal won it, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it, it, I think I actually These could see be the that best happening. games of the entire playoffs. Yeah, I actually could see. Which, it I mean, coming usually down they to are last second field goal. I think I think it, mm-hmm. I think I'll see that, but I'll, I'll take the Chiefs. Um, and you know what? I'm gonna be different because you went Saints Chiefs. I'll go Patriots. I go Saints Patriots uh, Super Bowl. Just to be different. All right. And no, 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 yeah. so somebody in the comments we talked about this they're mm-hmm. asking for more disagreements yeah i'm like this isn't this isn't first take where like <laughs> they have production meetings and they talk about all right you're gonna take this side of the argument you're gonna <laughs> take that side it's like this is just our actual opinions yeah so it's not like we, like i could sit here and say oh all day the rams are gonna beat the saints they have a litany of receivers and and jared goff and sean mcveigh's a beast they have todd Gurley. Their defense Aaron Donald, step up with their, with their DBs the coming back. The defensive line is is the best in the playoffs right now. But I'm like, I can't. I just think that I think the Saints are going to win, so I have to I have to say it, the Saints. I'm yeah. only going to disagree if we disagree. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I come down to thinking it. about it. Like I, I actually could see the Patriots winning, and uh, oh the, yeah, you know, Stephon saying. Gilmore. I mean, he's unbelievable year. So, uh, yeah, I'll go Patriots. All right, <laughs> so. Yeah, that is the uh, playoffs, so we'll see what happens on Sunday. Uh, so, 
Moving on to some college news, I guess, well, kind of college news, NFL draft news. Today was the last day for the draft deadline or for underclassmen to declare for the draft. Three uh, pretty, uh, pretty, you know, notable prospects declared today. So, I mean, Kyle Murray. One. Yeah, Kyle Murray. Kyle Murray. Kyle Murray. If you guys don't know that interview with, uh, with Quinn and Williams where he gets asked about, uh, Kyler Murray, he can't say his name. He basically says Calamari. <laughs> Calamari. And he, say, he, he started, and then it's like you saw the deer in the headlights, and he goes, nah, I'm good. It'll be <laughs> oh, on the yeah, screen, probably. Yeah. Have you gone up against any quarterback that slightly resembles Kyler Murray? Uh, no, nah, I don't feel like I have going against a quarterback slightly resembling Kyler Murray, but uh, I feel like Kyler Murray is not uh, where about <clears throat> – No, I'm good. Like, you remember no. that? Yeah, he's, he's like, like no. man, Kyler Murray ain't uh. And then and then he just he just completely he completely shuts down. Yeah, he's like, and nope. then the reporter's like, are you are you all right? He goes, hmm, me? Like, like, like yeah, yeah, you you just you just stop talking mid sentence out of nowhere, <laughs> and he goes, uh, no, nah, I'm good, <laughs> or I'm straight, or whatever he says. Yeah, and they, no, nah, I'm good. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, Kyler Murray ridiculous. <laughs> Kyler Murray officially declares. Now, this doesn't mean he chose the NFL over MLB. Um, and there's like conflicting, like ESPN saying, like he has three days. He doesn't. He has longer than three days to decide. He has pretty much up until spring training to decide if he wants to really play MLB and you know the A's, if the A's want to offer him the money or whatever. But yeah, this is smart for Kyler Murray because you know leverage. It's always great to have leverage. Oh yeah, always great to have leverage. So, uh, Kyler Murray, first one. Next one, Devin White officially declared today. Uh, we will talk about him in a future podcast. Possibly the next one, maybe. Um, Within the next two. Yeah. For sure. We've already, we've already looked over his tape, so um, yeah. we'll talk about it in a little bit. Very interesting prospect, I will say. Definitely an interesting prospect, so it's a big one. And then the final one was uh, TJ Hawkinson from... Mac Wilson as well. Mac Wilson declared a few days ago, yeah. Mm, I heard. I, I thought it was like... It was either yesterday or today. I think it was last night. Was it? I thought it was yeah, a few I think so. Ago. Yeah, it might have been last night. Mac Savion Wilson. Smith as well out of yeah. Bama. Yeah. But, well, I mean, there's a few more. I, I thought there was like three that declared today. So it was like uh, TJ Hawkinson from uh, Iowa. Yeah. Th- those were the today ones. Yeah, those were the yeah, today yeah. ones. And then there's uh, other ones that like a few days ago or yesterday. Mm-hmm. Past few days. So, yeah, so I mean, TJ Hawkinson is an interesting one. Include, um so. Top three tight end in this. In yeah, this draft, it's, it's weird because like we lost Albert O. Yeah, bring in T.J. Uh, Hawkinson. Yeah. He was solid. Just it. the The real question is: Is he even the best tight end on his team? Yeah, I mean, which the answer is maybe. Who knows? I don't know. It's, we'll it's to, hard we'll, to say. We'll have to talk. It about depends him on what later. you want. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to talk about him later. But yeah, so anyone else that didn't declare is uh, coming back because today was the last day. Unless mm-hmm. someone declares in like the next two hours, <laughs> which uh, but I don't, I don't think there's anyone really left that hasn't. No, there's said no we're not waiting on any notable name. Those are like the three that we're waiting on. So yeah, that is that. And then uh, we have the East West Shrine game. It, we're gonna probably uh, well, I'll be watching that. I'm I sure will. we both will be watching. That's it. We'll on probably... the 19th for those of you. Yeah, Saturday. We might have another one podcast come out before that. Well, I, I, I don't know if it'll come out. We might record another one before that, but who knows? Yeah, we've pretty much been recording these Monday, Tuesday, because mm-hmm. that's just it's relevant with the. Uh, it just works out with the playoffs. So, I think we'll probably do it after the East West Shrine game. We'll do it uh, and after the playoffs. So the next episode will feature kind of breakdown of that game. Some mm-hmm. guys that that stuck out from that. I I don't think it's notable to really to talk about guys who didn't perform because there's gonna be a lot more. Um, talk about some guys that kind of surprised us. Some guys that boosted their stock maybe some senior bowl invites on the way to one or two of those guys and um we'll talk about the playoffs so next episode should be good as well yeah definitely and then of course like the big the big well for us i guess the big guy is uh east and stick is in the east west shrine game so but there's other guys there's a lot of other pretty good players in there so yeah saturday that is the east west shrine game so uh I think it's uh, time for Prospect Breakdown, I would say, unless you got my my favorite. anything else. You ready for Prospect we, Breakdowns? We going with Calamari? Let's go with Calamari first. 
Kyler Murray, quarterback out of Oklahoma. He is a uh, straight up what junior, right? Uh, redshirt junior. straight up redshirt redshirt junior. Redshirt okay. junior. Um, he was at A and M for for a minute, mm-hmm. and uh, he is listed all <laughs> over the place. <laughs> all over the place. This is it's so ridiculous. 5'10", 195. This is just no mm-hmm. way. There's no way he's 5'10", 195. Let's just his, throw that His there. weight, I would give him 185 at his heaviest. I think he's probably more like 175, 180. And he certainly is not 5'10". He's 5'9", <laughs> with cleats on, I'd guess. This is a guy that's probably, without shoes, 5'8", 5'8 and a half. And I'm not even saying that to be funny. I like That's his probable actual height. Without shoes on, five eight and a half is what I'd give him, which is pretty small to play the quarterback position. Yeah, it's like Some, uh, he would be the shortest starting quarterback since Doug Flutie. <laughs> yeah, Ugh. I mean, and Doug, Doug Flutie was five ten. Yeah, Kyler Murray is not five ten. There's no way. You you show me five ten guy next to Kyler Murray, and it's gonna be an inch or two for sure. It, it just would be. He, there's no way, especially like, and you know, as a player that was uh, thinking about getting recruited to colleges to play football, they boost your height. What are you listed at? Like six foot, six one? Oh yeah. They, they'll, they'll, they'll throw on an inch. inch yeah. Or two. So, <laughs> I mean, like, I, especially if you're going to play quarterback, I imagine him coming out of, out of high school. They're like, yeah, he's a uh, well, five ten. He <laughs> isn't. He's not. He's a, uh, and that five ten. If, if they boost him up to five ten, oh. <laughs> That's still short to play. Like I'm telling you, five eight, five nine. That's his range. He is not five ten. Yeah, he's not yeah. close to five ten. And what's crazy is like people compare him to Russell Wilson. He like yeah. Russell Wilson has like two inches and like twenty pounds on him. Oh, <laughs> at least 20. at least Russell twenty Wilson's, pounds. <laughs> Russell Wilson's two fifteen. He it might, might have be like 30, 30 pounds. 40 pounds yeah. on him. <laughs> like it, there's a ridiculous. Uh, level of of bulk that russell wilson has like kyler murray does not and that does matter Mm -hmm. um some pros for kyler murray above average arm strength it's nothing to write home about in my opinion he does have a great deep ball his touch is fantastic but it's kind of weird he almost throws better on the run than actually setting his feet and planting which he doesn't like to do very often at all um a lot of the times he chooses to throw off balance which is kind of weird, but the, the weird thing about it is the ball gets there. His accuracy mm-hmm. is very good, but the main concern I would have is I don't think he really uh, threads the needle a lot. I don't think he's throwing into super tight windows. His receivers get a ton of separation. He's, he's playing with C.D. Lamb. He's playing with Hollywood Brown. Hollywood Brown might be a first-round pick this year. C.D. Lamb might be a first-round pick next year, and these are on them as receivers. Like, I thought it was crazy with the separation that Baker Mayfield was throwing to but he does things right as a pocket passer with surveying the field with making reads with going through his progressions kyler murray really doesn't do that for me um obviously an elite runner but he's got real happy feet in the pocket i know i know wheels did like a funny photoshop of the the happy feet poster yeah (laughs) might see it on the screen but he really has happy feet in the pocket this is not a guy who really likes to plant and throw he's constantly tapping his feet and he's just so so happy to run without really going through his reads, going through his progressions. He's looking to run almost immediately. Like, worse than Lamar Jackson was at Louisville, in my opinion. He is paranoid of pressure. His height also hurts. You see a lot of plays where he uh, has passes batted down at the line. And that's only going to get worse as he gets up to the next level. It's It's really interesting to watch him play. A lot of the time... You'll see him just really wait for routes to, to develop as far as they can so we can get the ball over the lineman, and that's not going to work with pressure coming in in the NFL. It just it just won't. You have to make quick reads, and he doesn't do that almost ever. Decision-making is also a questionable thing for me because you'll see him have that one read, and then they're like, oh, it's not open, and he just goes, fuck it, I'm throwing it anyway. And you're like, why would you ever make that decision? And it hasn't hurt him a lot. Uh, you see, like, dropped interceptions and, and uh, batted down balls where it's like he's throwing into double coverage deep down the middle of the field where there is no separation. And that is super worrying, uh, worrisome, because he doesn't do things that a first-round quarterback does from a mental standpoint. 
from a mechanical standpoint, and it's a problem. His arm is fantastic. Accuracy, power, he's got good arm talent. But his decision-making, his, his mental processing as a quarterback is poor. Stares down receivers all day. He does. It's so bad when you're watching him because he really does have that one read, and he's going to it. A lot of times he doesn't have like that Baker Mayfield ability to say, okay, first read isn't open. What do we do now? And kind of resurvey, reset, go over the rest of the field and make that read to the open receiver. Kyler Murray just doesn't do that. He's always looking to run, never throws the ball away. Uh, and boy, Wheels, do you know he loves an off-balance throw. He really does. Oh, man. Um, I, I don't think over the course of the maybe five or six games we saw when we were watching him on, uh, on stream, I don't, I don't see him make any like pre-snap adjustments ever. It's like once in a blue moon. He's kind of this is the play. He seems like he's a real Lincoln Riley system-based quarterback that gets by because he can he can run like nobody's business. Uh, he panics in a clean pocket, which is concerning. And it's like, hey, make your reads. Look for the routes to develop. If the old first read isn't there and he chooses not to throw it. He is running the football. He doesn't have second reads that he goes to, and that is certainly a uh, cause for concern. And um, his quick throws are inconsistent accuracy-wise, and I think a lot of that is due to height. What do you, what do you, what do you think? I know he just dominated uh, oh, the no, there like, for a minute. Yeah, but. no, we, uh, we agree on this a lot. I think he does have a good arm, and uh, it's just – it's the what's around in the pocket like he just doesn't it doesn't look like he's comfortable ever in the pocket even when he has a completely clean pocket it looks like he's always ready to go um staring down the receiver though the one thing i really really don't like about kyler murray and you kind of touched on this is that uh he's off balance on throws he if you watch him throw the ball he will fade on every throw Mm -hmm. almost I would say like 85% of his throws, he's fading backwards. And, you know, it's because he's trying to get the ball up and over the offensive line. I think that's what it has to be. Yeah. And, and that height is just a problem. The, the height, you, we saw a lot of tip, like a few tip passes, and that's going to be mm-hmm. even worse in the NFL because they're bigger linemen in the NFL. So it's just, uh, I, I see what people like about Kyler Murray because of the arm. And, uh, you know, the his running arm ability, is, is really, really he good. He has a really it, good arm. He makes plays that go, you know, you'll go, hey, that's Patrick Mahomes right there. But this, like, people want to compare Kyler Murray to Russell Wilson, and the comparison is not there. Russell Wilson is a polished pocket passer that has dealt with a poor offensive line by buying time in the pocket, rolling out when he needs to, and he always knows when to throw it away. And Russell Wilson goes through his progressions really really well the Russell Wilson comparison is not one I like at all people just want to make that comparison pigeonhole him into the short quarterback area but Russell Wilson does things like a top 10 quarterback does because he he is a top 10 quarterback easily uh and I don't think Kyler Murray right now profiles as a first round player as a quarterback really worries me I think the bottom line here is he's an intriguing player his height absolutely hurts and is his, his greatest detractor by far he makes a ton of flashy plays, but he really doesn't do things right from a mental processing standpoint, and he's really going to let you down with consistency. I think he is a, a uh, around two to three player as a quarterback that's probably going to go in the first round, and I know people are going to hate all over that. He won the Heisman, but what I look for in a quarterback is things that like Baker Mayfield had, which is mental processing, ability to adapt under pressure, especially Baker, which is incredible. Kyler Murray's terrible at doing that. And these things are really, really going to hurt if he tries to be an NFL quarterback, which I guess he's going to be. Uh, and I don't have a comparison for him, really. I think he shows traits of guys like Lamar Jackson, of Michael Vick, but of Johnny Manziel, too. And I think it's an issue. I think Johnny Manziel with a better arm is the most accurate comparison you're going to get. And it's a weird player. It's it's part of the reason I don't like comparisons because a lot of times there isn't one. And if there's ever been a player without a true comparison, I think it's probably Kyler Murray. He's a good player, but he needs to get over some of these mental hurdles because they will really, really hurt him if he's the same player throughout his career. Yeah, it's uh, it's almost like maybe the Big 12 defenses really helped him out. And uh, the decision-making, uh, he does not throw the balls away. That's another thing we noticed too is he does not throw the ball away. He will try to just throw it up or just run. So a little bit worrying. Uh, 
I would say like I don't even I kind of don't even want to grade him as a round two guy. I I almost want to say like three three to five guy, but he is going to go in the first round just because of hype alone. I would think. And, I think uh, his arm and accuracy is what brings him up to a two three for me. Yeah. And and the running ability obviously is good. I think is he he's really probably a third round quarterback. Mm-hmm. Um, but his arm is so good. Yeah. So it's just it, it's I think a weird player. Very very yeah, weird player. Uh, love or hate player. And I mean, is a team going to take a chance on him? Maybe. Absolutely. Maybe. Absolutely. Especially he's in, the first go round. in the first round. I think he's he, going to go in the first round. I think he goes in the first round. I don't think he'll go as high as some people are going to th- are thinking maybe mid first i would say he he probably yeah it was probably a decent spot and this i don't think people are always going to say it it's not hating on him no it's just he's such a weird player and he does so so many things poorly that even though he he makes these incredibly flashy plays and he has you know these great throws and with with touch accuracy power mm-hmm. great deep ball but the consistency the accuracy on a down to down basis is not there and I think what really kind of sells me the opposite way on him, so I guess it doesn't sell me on him as a player, is the only real defense he played the entire year was against Alabama, and every defense he plays in the NFL is going to be better than Bama, probably significantly, and he looked really bad in the Alabama game. He looks really bad. Yeah. So, I don't know, man. It's, it's just, this is a weird player. It's, it's bottom tough. line. It's tough. And yeah. I, I would love to see his measurements if he does, you know, end up at the combine, which is still kind of a question. We don't know. We don't know if he's actually going to go to the NFL, but um, yeah, it's a it's a weird player. It's definitely a weird player. I think, definitely don't think a team should trade up into the top ten. No, together. no, no. Definitely. Don't I think, think so. the bottom line with him before we move on to the next player, and I guess this will probably end the prospect breakdown video. If you guys are watching this on on the Bengal YouTube channel um, later. Is he has first round traits and he has sixth or seventh round traits. So it kind of it's it's weird player, weird player. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like just some absolutely amazing stuff, and then other stuff is like, whoa, mm-hmm. how is he even going to be in the NFL? So yeah, Kyler Murray, interesting player, and I guess we'll just leave it at that for now. Next player, I'm really hyped about this player. Another offensive player, Josh Jacobs. So halfback from Alabama Junior is coming out early. 5'10, 216 is what he's been listed at. And uh yeah, I'm I'm a big fan. <laughs> Let me tell you, I'm a big fan. Uh first things first, he doesn't have a lot of miles coming into the NFL because he split carries between two other guys. <laughs> There's three running backs at Alabama that all got carries. So I think that's a, that's the first thing there. But this guy is an absolute monster. Honestly, I didn't really see that much of a negative watching this tape i mean i don't i don't have much negative on him yeah. if anything he's got i feel like he's got great vision he hits holes very well has quick cuts uh arm tackles like there's no, it doesn't like if you're trying to arm tackle him it's not gonna happen it, you're not mm-hmm. it's a broken tackle and he also fights through tackles a lot and it seems like he almost breaks tackles that first tackle very well he lowers his shoulders which is big to you know to get the extra yards he falls forward a lot he's okay in the uh the receiving game you know nothing nothing too special i would say decent hands okay routes nothing too crazy the pass blocking if there is one negative maybe it could be the pass blocking it could be a little bit better but yeah big fan of him he's also like deceptive deceptively fast i would say maybe four four speed i would say and uh yeah i think he's uh if there is a comparison to make for me personally, I think he's a very, very similar player to MJD. So, and uh, Ravens, please draft him. <laughs> I like him. I like I mean, him a lot. I like him a lot. He's 5'10", 215. That's pretty good size for a running back. Mm-hmm. With with RB, you can kind of get anywhere from, from I mean, MJD was 5'7". He was very successful. Yeah. It's not so much about the height. I think, you know, around the 5'11 range is really, like, ideal height for running back but you we see in guys that are 6'1 6'2 who've been incredible adrian peterson brandon jacobs was 6'3 and he was a beast for a while yep. so the height just kind of weird with running backs i don't really care about it too much 5'10 is kind of like ideal height almost mm-hmm. 215 he has a lot of weight on him a lot of that's muscle he is incredibly strong not afraid of contact at all he can go through you but he can also go around you 
his cuts are really good and his vision and patience um, is also really solid. Had the benefit of running behind the Alabama offensive line, but he hits holes really, really well. And that's something you don't see from uh, every college running back for sure. That's the toughest thing for them is that vision and that patience. And he showcases it pretty well. So even though he does have um, all that raw power, that physicality, don't try to arm tackle him because it, it's like you're not even there. He's going to go right through it. Um, and some of his cutbacks are fantastic. He really plants and, and gets back up to top speed really, really quickly. As you said, if there's one concern, maybe it's pass blocking. Maybe he's only a first and second down runner. Um, but he does have pretty good hands out of the backfield. There was no real uh, cause for concern to say, hey, this guy has brick hands like Leonard Fournette. I mean, they seem pretty good. Good change of direction. Um, the route running is another detractor. It's average, but I mean, as a running back, you're not really asked to run a lot of routes. He's not a guy that's probably going to get lined up in the slot ever like Christian McCaffrey. He's running maybe angles, swings, block and go, block and release, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think he's probably going to run like 4-4-7, could go up 4-4-5. Really, really fast player for a comparison for me. As you said, it's good with MJD. I think he's a stronger Alvin Kamara. His balance is really, really good. And um, that's something even with limited attempts like Alvin Kamara had mm-hmm. at Tennessee. And Bama. You can see the balance. <laughs> yeah, you can <laughs> you can see the balance. You can see the burst. Um, he breaks tackles relentlessly. Josh Jacobs, really, really good player. I have his talent as a round one player, and uh, I think he will go in the first or the second. This is a player that, uh, I mean, no way he falls to the third round. He's probably the best running back in this class. He is RB1 for me and wheels right now, I'm pretty yep, sure. Yep, RB1. I yeah. mean, I want the Ravens to get him. I need it. End of round one, let's get him. So, yeah, Josh Jacobs. Like, that tape, man. Watching this tape was just crazy. Just seeing what he could do. So, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty excited about him. I guess we'll go to the third guy now. So, defensive player, Jonathan Abram, safety. Uh, he is a mm-hmm. senior and, uh, you know, six foot, 215, Mississippi State. What do you got to say about Jonathan Abram? You know, he's a weird player. He's mm-hmm. a weird player because there's not a ton on him. Like when we were looking at some of the tape, and YouTube's a good a good resource for a lot of this if you're, if you're like us and you don't have what ESPN has access to with the All-22 and things like that. Um but some games he was a monster. Other games, it's like he didn't even show up, which was, which is weird. But he excels in zone coverage, also excels in man coverage. We saw him get really, really sticky with tight ends, with wide receivers, with running backs. He can cover really, really well on a down-to-down basis. Saw him even come up as a linebacker, and he was great there. Uh, I think his best role is as a nickel corner or a box safety, but we saw him play over the top and he was really successful in that role as well. So his versatility, I think is certainly a plus. Uh, and he sheds blocks really well, better than some linebackers who play at LSU. Maybe. Um, (laughs) the one concern I think is him as a tackler. He's a big hitter, but this guy goes for way too many arm tackles. He just doesn't utilize his technique that you see. Sometimes it's just inconsistent. Uh, as are his angles of pursuit. He runs right past running backs sometimes, right past tight ends. He just, he over pursues, over commits. Also, much like some LSU linebackers or <laughs> linebacker. Uh, I think his range is decent. It's it's nothing to write home about average. Um, and I think his speed is average to above average. Nothing crazy for a safety, maybe four, five, five, something like that. Um, but he does play pretty fast. He plays quick. And um, we talked about his versatility could be his largest asset. He could play free safety, strong safety, slot cornerback, box linebacker, like money backer, like Dayon Buchanan does in Arizona. Super instinctive player, but the consistency is an issue because we saw him in some games go off. Best player on the entire field, better than Jeffrey Simmons, better than Montez Sweat. And then we're like, is this guy even going to get drafted in some games? It's just, it was, it was weird. Yeah, it's uh he he's definitely a strange player. I think uh you know like you said, great in man and zone. I think he is best inside the box. He could definitely play the nickel, uh, corner role, the slot corner role. But I think he's he makes the, the, the you get the best use out of him inside the box. But uh, it's like his tackling. 
there's no middle ground with this tackle. He's either arm tackling or he's just torpedoing himself at people. <laughs> he will launch himself at people. There's no there's no middle ground there. So it's it's really weird. He could you know maybe uh, get better at tackling, and that's some you know that's coachable. I would say tackling. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, the angles are very inconsistent. The range is yeah nothing crazy. Um, like you said, not the fastest player, but he plays fast. Like game, he plays game speed fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, but not you know like he, I, I wouldn't expect him to run like a crazy forty or anything like that. Ball skills are all right too, and uh, very inconsistent player. But man, he is amazing when he's on his game. He is absolutely incredible. And uh, the tape to watch if you guys are interested. Uh, go look at his Egg Bowl tape egg from bowl? this year. Yeah, it's uh, Ole Miss. Ole Miss, in case you guys don't know. Mm-hmm. So uh, just search, like, Jonathan Abram versus Ole Miss 2018. That tape, incredible. Absolute incredible tape. If he plays like that every day or every game, whew, he's going to yeah, be a beast. I mean, he's a fringe first-round player. I could see him get taken at the end of the first round. His pure talent for me is probably as a second-round player. I think he could go anywhere from late first to the third round. Uh, it just depends. Are you getting the best Jonathan Abram? Then, yeah, yeah I think he's a first-round player. But inconsistency is uh, is something that you see a lot. Uh, and, you know, consistency is a problem for him. If I had to make a comparison, kind of like a Malcolm Jenkins, uh, but even, like, he looks exactly like Jamal Adams, and that's that's not a race thing. <laughs> no, he you, looks you exactly like You can't tell the like difference. They, they're the exact, they look the exact same. And you know what? They kind of they play very similarly as well. Uh, I'm not sure if Jonathan Abram... Day one is going to be the player that Jamal Adams was and has been over these past two years with the Jets, but he's a player that has that potential and he plays a very similar game to Jamal Adams, especially in coverage. The one thing I would say is Jamal Adams was a very, very sound tackler, took great angles to the ball, was really solid as a run stopper, and uh, I think Abram is just too inconsistent right now, but he has Jamal Adams' ceiling. If you can get down the, the pursuit and the tackling, I mean, you're basically getting Jamal Adams, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, I think – I don't know if he'll be first shot. Maybe a team will just fall absolutely in love with this guy's tape. Uh, maybe they'll watch, like, the Egg Bowl tape and be like, wow, that's mm-hmm. really amazing. Uh, I would say second, maybe third, somewhere around there. I think I don't think he drops out of the third round. I would be really shocked if he goes out of the third round. So, um, yeah, very good player. Uh, and a lot of the stuff that is coachable with him that – He's not that that's, great at That's right the now. biggest thing. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest thing. So And his cover his coverage is really solid. Yeah, very it's good a, coverage. It's another very weird good. player. A lot of weird players in this episode. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess two. Uh, I think Josh Jacobs is is you, you probably can't miss with that. Mm-hmm. And it seems like uh you know, everyone can play running back nowadays, so <laughs> he, he's good. Get him behind the good offensive line. Even maybe not. He's a solid player. Abram solid if he comes to play and then Kyler Murray. Biggest question mark ever could be could be incredible, but he has some really bad traits. So I don't know. I don't know. It's an, it'll be an interesting one. Draft day, draft day could be really really interesting. I hope you guys like all these prospect breakdown videos and and the podcasts and all that because for me, if you know the player and if you're acquainted with that player more, that makes a draft all the more interesting because you see how these players fit in with these teams and. You, you can kind of get an idea in your head how these players are going to impact the teams from the first game that they're there. So, I mean, I, I just, I love the draft. I love draft season. I love college football. I love scouting these prospects. And uh, it, it is fun, for sure. And uh, there are always the opportunity to miss on a player. Murray, sky high or, you know, falling out the bottom floor or whatever. He's got such a low floor, which is a concern. Yeah, it's just, do you want to take that risk? That's what it really comes down to is what team is going to take that risk. So, The Miami yeah. Dolphins. <laughs> Miami Dolphins, maybe. <laughs> Kyler Murray to Miami. Although, apparently it, it they're saying 2020 is uh, what they're saying. They, they're looking forward to 2020. They might tank this year, <laughs> the Miami Dolphins. What if, what if I, think, I think Murray goes to three teams. All right, you ready? Okay. Miami. Mm-hmm. Washington. Okay. I, I could easily see him going to the Redskins. I actually could see that a lot. I mean, they need a quarterback, so. And oh, I almost want to say just for the sake of my, my Kyler Murray two-sport player series at Chargers. 
as an option, but I, I don't think so. I think they're going to try and I think they'll win wait it again for a with Philip Rivers. Yeah, I think I think if they do draft a quarterback this year, they'll wait. They'll wait. There's I mean, I don't, there's I a, don't really see him going to Denver. Kyler Murray? Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't think so. It just doesn't seem like a John Elway. I mean, John Elway didn't like Tim Tebow, so he loves he loves prototypes. He lo- he likes the uh, the traditional. QBs. Drew Locke to Denver. Drew Locke Daniel makes Jones more to sense. Denver. Daniel Jones makes. Sense. We're going to talk yeah, more about Daniel Jones later on. Daniel Blake Daniel Bortles. Jones will be a prospect. Blake Bortles really coming up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say this every time, Blake Bortles. But uh, no, it's, we'll, it's talk, we'll talk good, more about that. We'll talk more about comparison. that. But yeah, I, I think uh, as always with these prospect breakdowns, if you guys are like interested I, I would say youtube just look up a player just type in whatever player and then versus try to find some tape from this year and check it out your guys self because uh maybe you guys see some stuff that we don't see maybe you guys disagree and the best way to do that is to uh you know do a little prospect breakdown for you guys, for yourself the, so the toughest thing i would say on that and this is not to discredit anyone but because we were streaming going over some of these players and some yeah. of the guys were so off base with what they were saying. <laughs> it was just incredible. So, I mean, to an extent, you have to know what to look for. Yeah. So, I mean, try to watch tape on, on some of the best players in the NFL. See what they do well. I would say look at scouting reports. That's how I got into it. I started looking at scouting reports back in, like, 2013, 2014. And I was looking to see, okay, what are, the, what are some of the top, um, like, true scouts in the media have to say about these guys? Mm-hmm. And then looking at what they said and then going back to the tape and looking to see if I can find it on tape and, and see what they have and see what they do well and what they don't do well. And once you get kind of a rhythm in it, and this is what, like five, six years for me now, where mm-hmm. I've been doing this every year with you know countless hours, you kind of get a feel for each of the positions. You know what you like to see. You know what you don't like to see. Um, so it's interesting. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say just go out and look at a guy and then, and say, oh, wow, he got a sack. He's a great pass rusher <laughs> because that's not always the case. Oh, he threw a touchdown. He's a great quarterback. Yeah, that, that would be a player that we're going to talk about in a future podcast where it's like he has the numbers, but it's like you look at the tape and it's like, mm, where, did they com- where did they come from? Where is it's You got to see what's no in between words. from. No spoilers. Yeah, you got to see what the <laughs> in between from pre-snap to the end of the play. You got to see what everything that happens. So Yeah. So that's why highlights are, are a bad thing because yeah, don't you highlights. can't see their consistency. You can't see what they're doing on a down-to-down basis, especially for a quarterback, especially for receivers, especially for every position, yeah, every if we're position. being honest. Yeah, every every position. position. So, there. I mean, there are a couple of guys. It's like uh, there's a linebacker. There's a uh, another linebacker. Edge. Edge. Edge <laughs> linebacker type a of dude. Quarterback. There Four. are a number of players that are getting really hyped up. That uh, I don't like, that Wheels doesn't seem to like. I mean, it's, it, it's it'll like, be very interesting, and I can't wait for the hate on those videos. Oh, uh, it's it's gonna be bad. This is gonna we'll be bad to because see. it's these are these are like li- well liked players too. Where <laughs> that that are hyped up. Uh, I feel I feel like we're spoiling this too much. <laughs> but yeah, future and, episodes, not, future though. prospect breakdown. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. But um, yeah, it's kind of. I think we will definitely start, you know, doing more episodes too, so that you guys we can get you guys these prospect breakdowns more often. Uh, like we said, I mean, we might try to record after that uh, the Shrine game, mm-hmm. so maybe two episodes, something like that. Maybe. So, yeah, uh, a lot of interesting breakdowns. But as always, let us know who you guys want us to do a uh, breakdown next in the comments down below, and uh, that's a perfect segue into a viewer comments. Hell yeah! So, for I haven't seen any of these. You have some screenshots. I, I got some screenshots. I got I got a few comments. First comment from Jared Charles. He says, uh, "Bangle, can you please fix that Odell poster in the back?" <laughs> <laughs> All right, done. <laughs> uh, I thought that was a funny one. Um, Riot Tux. He says, what team would y'all say would look up to trade for a top 10 pick? So Miami. I think Miami is Washington. One. It, it's any team that needs a quarterback, I would say. And obviously there are going to be other teams that are looking up to trade for other of these top players. Who needs an edge rusher that has some picks? I think Green Bay is a team that could maybe move into the top 10, although I, I wouldn't if I were them. Um, a lot of the times you're going to see – 
like teams just outside the top 10 trade up. Yeah, so, like so 11, 12, 13. I mean, Dolphins are at 13. Packers are at 12. Just possible. Yeah. Who who would that be? Who else? Let's see the order here. So you got so after the top ten, you have the Bengals, Bengals Packers, Dolphins, Falcons, Redskins, Panthers. I mean, out of those, you're looking at the Redskins and the Dolphins, and if the Bengals are looking for a quarterback, I think that's a pretty like that's something that nobody's talking about. Yeah, like, Andy Dalton's not a franchise guy, and. Cincinnati is going to have a new head coach. Yeah, that's a big thing. New head coach is he? Does he like Andy Dalton, or does he want his new quarterback? Does he want his own? Andy quarterback? Andy Dalton is thirty-one years old, really? and his contract wow. his contract is uh, until twenty twenty-one. So two years. Here, oh, here's what's interesting. Three years. Well, well, listen to this. In twenty nineteen, right? Mm-hmm. There is no dead cap for releasing him. So they could cut him right now. Well, or when the offseason, or what is it, March or whatever, when the next yeah, league season whatever, starts, whatever the deadline is, they could cut him. Um, and they they would they would save uh, it's like sixteen mil. That's a lot. So it's 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 not an out, but it is uh there's no dead cap, so it is an out, yeah. essentially. Um. Interesting. And Bengals like these teams, these teams are going to be looking into not only getting into the top ten, but probably trying to get into the top five above the Giants. So I think teams are going to want to uh, kind of uh, hedge their bets. And teams that need a quarterback, you could have the Jags at seven, mm-hmm. the Giants at six. I don't think people are talking about it, but the Bucks at five could be a team that takes a quarterback, especially with a new head coach, Bruce Arians. The quarterback whisperer, does he try to go uh, Jameis Winston for I, another I, year? I think so. Or I, think, he say, I think he'll stick or, with Jameis one year. Or, or, or does he say, hey, I'm Bruce Arians. This team is not going to be picking this high again while I'm here. I'm going quarterback now. The, yeah. The, Raider, the Raiders are a team that would be looking to trade back without needing a quarterback. The Jets, the 49ers, mm-hmm. the Cardinals. Every team with a top four pick has their quarterback of the future according to that team. Yeah. Rosen, Garoppolo, Darnold, Carr. Those are four teams that could all be looking to get out of the way. I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. I mean, quarterbacks, teams always try to trade up for quarterbacks, but we'll see. I, I Who think, would have thought think... that Blake Bortles would have went at number three years ago? He wasn't yeah. that great of a prospect. And, I mean, we see how he's turned out. He's horrific. But <laughs> could, we, could we see Daniel Jones as the top three pick? Yes. I think Dwayne so. Haskins? Yes. Uh, Drew Locke. Drew Locke, perhaps. Kyler Murray. Who Will knows? Greer. You, you never know. That's what it is. EJ Manuel was a first-round pick. Remember Christian that? Christian Ponder was a top-ten pick. He went at number seven, I think. <laughs> it's like number seven, seven or eight, or number I'm nine. pretty sure. Christian, Christian Ponder went pretty Ponder. high, I'm pretty sure. He was the... I think it was eight. I want to say eight. Twelfth, twelfth pick. Oh, so 12. not top-ten. I thought he was. I mean, still, like, Christian Ponder was a pretty high. <laughs> number 12 overall pick. That's way too high. So, yeah, if there is a team that wants to trade out, I think I think you're looking at not only top 10, but probably top five pick they're looking to trade up. So, I, I would say it would be someone, like, just outside the top 10 tries to trade up. And mm-hmm. uh, Dolphins, Redskins, especially Redskins, I think uh, the Redskins – they're at a point where they kind of have to draft a quarterback, right? Because they have they're still paying Alex Smith all that money. Yeah. So I don't think they're gonna want to pay another quarterback a bunch of money in free agency. I think they would much rather just get a rookie. I mean, they're still paying. They're gonna still have to pay the rookie a decent amount, but it'll be interesting. It'll, it'll be, be interesting. It'll be interesting. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So that is that. That was a. That was a long one. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and then what else we got here? So uh, last one from Unsphered Comb, I guess. That's what it is. It says uh, something about shooting his shot. <laughs> but he says, uh, how do you feel about Bryce Love's stock after tearing his ACL? So this was like news that just came out that he tore his ACL in the final game of the season. Not in, not in his bowl game, but in the final game the of the season. The final game he played, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. I don't know. I think people people oversell injuries 
Guys have always come back from ACLs. I mean, Look at Adrian Peterson. I mean, he's got a freak Gurley. of nature, but Todd Gurley yeah, I mean, tore his ACLs they're, last year. There are uh, so Georgia. many examples, but I think, Bryce Love did not have a good season this yeah, year. Yeah, I think Bryce Bryce Love's stock dropped from the production this season. In, in my Jets, in my Jets video, before I knew that he tore his ACL, I was talking about him potentially having injury concerns. And I had him going in the third round to the Jets. The, you I dropped think, that video like what a day before that came out too, or something. I like think that? I think like day or like two. six hours, six hours, <laughs> six hours. <laughs> um, yeah. So he's a guy that probably doesn't hear his name called before the third round. That's what I'd say. Could go as late as the fourth or fifth. I think I think he's a three to five guy now. In a yeah. league where there are so many running backs. There's a Where ton of all running backs, running back prospects every year. too. So. Yeah, I, he's just. Am I taking Bryce Love over a guy like David Montgomery or Josh Jacobs or Damian Harris or Devin Singletary? Uh, no, I'm just not. So. Yeah, I think I I don't think the injury really killed his stock. It, it will hurt a little bit, but it's it's a production from this year. Dur- I think, durability I, was already a concern. I think he it's almost like he made a mistake coming back. Yeah, uh, for sure. For sure he for, did. For sure, yeah. <laughs> Just There's mistake, some guys mistake. that boosted their stock a lot uh, with numbers and, and stuff like that, but yeah, uh, Bryce, Love, Bryce Love, Love was not one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not good. So uh, that's about it from what I see for uh, viewer comments. I don't know if you – Well, we'll, do, we'll do one more from Julio Suarez. Okay. Julio Suarez. Do you like a Nasir Adderley to Justin Reed comparison? The answer is no. <laughs> there you go i agree <laughs> so yeah i mean anything else here i think uh, uh no, i mean we're pretty, still waiting on pretty... some coaching hires i will say uh greg roman being promoted to offense coordinator for the ravens is awesome Mor- marty mornerweg's uh, play calling was bad <laughs> as we saw in the chargers game and uh greg roman was the offense coordinator with uh kaepernick in san francisco so I'm I excited. Another one here from MFG Z Gucci it says, "Is Golden Tate a close comp for AJ Brown?" Uh, no, no, <laughs> no, not even, not even close. I want, I want to see more of these. Where do you think uh, Kyler Murray's a good comp for Tom Brady? <laughs> <laughs> is he the next goat? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I think that'll, that'll pretty much do it. Yeah, so as always, you know, comment down below. It doesn't have to be like what prospects you want to see. I mean, that's always cool. Always interested to see what prospects you guys want to see. But just any sort of comments, you know, so that we could have some more viewer comments in this section of the podcast. So just let us know any sort of thoughts, football related, and uh, we'll probably we'll check it out in the next episode. So yeah, I mean, I guess that's gonna be it. Uh, future, do you want to? Should we give a? Uh, little sneak peek for the next prospect breakdown no for next episode or no no we, we will because then it'll uh little, little people hype. i mean people will say whoever they want anyway well I, uh, I will say the the next one we got some like first rounders well pe- what people are saying are yeah we're, it's, it's some more like top grading we've kind of been like all over the place i think mm-hmm. we're gonna start getting to the meat and potatoes of the draft, right? We're going to start with some top guys. And then as the episodes work their way down, I think we're going to do a lot more after the season is officially over to kind of cram all these guys in, Mm -hmm. get as many prospect breakdowns up as possible. Uh, We're going to work our way down the board, essentially, of uh, what the media says, and then we'll assemble our own big board. So next episode, you're going to see three guys. Maybe you'll even do more than three um, in an episode, kind of get more of them done. Because they don't really take that long. It's like no, no. we talk 10 minutes with each player. Um, we won't have to break down any of the uh, the postseason games. So what are we going to talk about? Yeah, so definitely after hey, the so, season, we'll, we could probably yeah, throw so a little bit more in there. Josh but, Allen, outside linebackers, or Edge, Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Cleveland Furl, Edge, Clemson. David Montgomery. Halfback, Iowa State. Devin White, linebacker, LSU. Am I missing anybody? Uh, those are the guys that we've already gone over. Or Daniel Jones. And Daniel then, uh, Jones will be in the I've already future. looked a little bit at Daniel Jones. I think you still want to look at more of him, right? So. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, and I think the next two names that I haven't got to yet that I want to and I'm going to, mm-hmm. Ed Oliver. Yes. Quinn and Williams. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got to touch Nick Bosa at some point. I've already seen him, but he's Nick yeah, Bosa is very, Bosa, very good. Yeah. <laughs> but he's a player that we have to get to. Yeah, um, so... So, I mean, work your way down the board. That's what it's going to look like. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll probably do, like, something like that, or, like, the top from that position. So, like, even though people probably don't view Nikhil Harry as a top, you know, 10 guy, uh, he's one of the best of his of his group. So, might do Nikhil Harry very soon. And there are some exciting players to look out for. So, yeah, as always, let us know down in the comment section below. And uh, I'll see you next time on this 7th Round Buster Nut Podcast. <laughs> Peace. Take it easy.